you know, something that I really love about Goose in Boots was the fear you could feel across the entire movie. It's not a surprise this dude was the key behind the success of the film, but what if I told you him along as a character isn't enough for a good movie? How to create the ultimate villain and why they both work so well? Before diving into that, let's jump into the story building of this amazing movie. Just 5 minutes in the movie, we already knew a lot of things. We knew the cat was heroic, fearless, free, brave, but also careless, narcissistic, and a really cool guy everyone likes. The noise of the party awakened a giant that was asleep for a long time. From here, the gears were already moving. An epic showdown between these two starts. With the conclusion of this battle, our main character died and received the worst news of his life. He had only one life remaining. As a cat, a life of his nine life were gone. This scared him a bit, but it wasn't too much for him till the main star of the show appears. With these two events on the table, the bounty hunter appears, attacking our hero's weaknesses. This time, it's not a giant being or someone who surpasses by a lot the cat in size. However, this is all that was needed to portray to the viewer a sense of danger. Thanks to the giant, we had information and a sense of the strength of the boots in boots. So the formula is like the following. So the cat defeats the giant and the wolf the cat. That means he is held up and creates intrigue to the viewer. With only one life remaining, the hunter did his move, infusing fear to our protagonist. Across the film, they had multiple encounters, always resulting in our brave pulsing boots running away from the fight. Even if the story was moving forward away from him, we were always being reminded that he is lurking in the shadows. For the first time in his life, the cat encountered an enemy he couldn't defeat, destroying all his belief about being a hero or the legend he proclaimed himself to be. This made our hero give up in his adventures and dreams, seeking where to hide in a shelter for cats. With just a few minutes of appearance in the film, the hunter crushed the cat, showing us a glance of what makes a good villain, powerful enough to present a threat to the protagonist. He has a deep connection to the main character in relationship to the story or the world building, contrasting belief between him and the protagonist. When he's on field, he emanates fear and respect. He has like bad qualities, for example, his hair hot, attacks the weak points of the protagonist, and the forces of antagonism pushes our main character to making difficult decisions resulting in revealing his true actual self. With the forces, I mean that he's always pushing the cat into making really hard decisions, pushing him away from his boundaries and comfort zone. A good villain makes sure that the main character has development, making him grow and also be ready for the challenge that comes. He is a really good force of antagonism. Going back to the shelter, this reminds me of a class about digital animation I had in college. We were talking about the journey a hero embarks before wishing glory. This is called the hero's journey or path. He first starts the journey with a call of adventure. He got the news that he was close to die. He then meets a mentor or someone that will be a partner for him. He will be learning from him. In this case, it's Perrito. Then he will cross the unknown world. This is the world that is unknown for the main character that will lead him to learn new things. He will have trials, it could be physical or emotional, and then he will have a close approach to the death. This will lead him to have a rebirth or a revelation that will change him completely and he will get his reward or gift he always wanted to have at the beginning of the journey. Does this sound familiar to you? Hell yeah! Later on, it was revealed the bounty hunter was actually the death in person and he was aiming to kill Puss in Boots for not valuing his previous lives. Now, this will be subjective, but across the years of watching movies, anime, series, I have found a pattern, some things that I have found that usually all finals main villains have and it's two simple things. He did an action that made a big impact to the hero or the hero's world and comes from a legend or a myth or something mystical or ancient. So now, as a summary, what makes a good villain? In some cases, the villain brings the plot or the problems and the hero solves them. It's in the dynamism between the main character and the antagonist 
that they can both shine. If Puss in Boots didn't die for the eighth time, he would have never met the death. Hence, he would still be a reckless cat. The death was able to shine so much in the first place because of the completely different personality the cat had. He shattered all his beliefs, making a great impact to the viewer, showing a facet we never saw of Puss in Boots. Both the villain and the hero needs an environment to shine proper to the universe they are from. Puss in Boots is the story about a boy lost in himself, looking for a meaning to life. It's a story about love and fear, two strong emotions that allow us to wake up each day and work towards a better life. This is why we could feel like we were inside of the movie, living the story that was unfolding in front of us in the cinema, making Puss in Boots a really human and believable character. He doesn't just overcome each obstacle, in some of them, he runs away. However, in the end, he was brave enough to face them in a final showdown against the death. The death Pushing the boundaries of Puss in Boots, it revealed Cat's true nature. Something to note in each story is that the greater the pressure, the deeper the revelation. Thus, the more human, compelling and natural a cat will feel. Puss in Boots decided to not retrieve his nine lives. He decided to fight for his last one and protect it. The death, seeing Puss in Boots, Big Nuts and also his determination and development from being an arrogant cat to actually care for himself and others, he decided to forget about his hunting, telling him to live his life to the fullest. The best villain is not the most powerful, meticulous or malicious one, makes it memorable by pushing our main character to making hard decisions but them giving the satisfaction of actually surpassing those obstacles. As a rule of thumb, make sure to make that villain give a valuable lesson to our main character, to make him grow with the forces of antagonism. This will be my drawing. If you are interested in my line work, I actually have a dedicated video to that that I talk in depth about this. Let me know in the comment section if you like it. I think it's decent considering that I have never ever draw actual animals. So yeah, this will be it. Please remember to subscribe. Thank you so much guys for watching. Take care and bye.